and also tell us how to, you know what this entire thing about this banyan tree insights that you have curated so over to you thank you thank you rashmi thank you so much and uh, people i must confess uh, my introduction to the corporate world was rashmi <laughs> when i had joined standard charter as a, as a young fresh management trainee out of my b school rashmi was the one who was hand holding uh, hand holding us yeah and leading us into 20 years 2020 thank you what was it oh more than more than right? yeah. yeah. 2000 batch 2000 yeah um but yeah it's it's been a it's been an interesting journey it's been a good fun journey um in fact before i launch into uh, what i thought we could talk about uh, i must confess this is actually my third life that i'm on right um my first life started when i was about 13 um and um, i sort of discovered that i was a healer when i was 13 and uh, did what any and every other teenager would do at that age which is go into denial and anger and resentment and rebellion because honestly at that age uh, you know you have enough of the world to be dealing with then to also find out that uh, you can hear things that others can't or see things that others can't um and i think uh, one second i'm having technology issues um but that's um, so that that was the first life and that continued for almost 20 years thankfully there were moments of sanity where one fell in love and got married and uh, pursued a career um i think about 10 years ago is when the moment of epiphany happened about 10 years ago is when one realized that uh, you know literally we get in a bhagwan ji gives you one tight slap and says you know really don't you get what you're doing in life and uh, that's when i shifted back into mythology into finding my meaning my purpose uh, into what uh, what are the conflicts we deal with at our workplace into the fact that why was my mba not equipping me or enabling me to sort out my workplace issues and things like that so that was about a 10 year journey the second life which started about 10 years ago uh, is is the life of just embracing yourself about why you are who you are where you are why were you sent here etc cetera, etc cetera. um and that's when i embraced mythology from my purpose from my passion shifted from banking into learning development executive coaching uh this is also the time that i became the ceo for future shop skills which is among the largest skilling employability livelihoods company in india works very closely with nstc and if you heard heard any but i think about the government's mandate on skilling on nstc that's that's what we do um so that's that's been my second life and very recently just about uh, two year two years ago year and a half two years ago is when this one bright day while i was at oxford uh, one just got up and said oh all right there is there are no grays there are no blacks and whites there's only just this absolute clarity of consciousness kind of a white um i think i stepped into my third life and this third life is just about stepping into myself and really uh exploring evangelizing and putting myself out there to say how many people can i help with uh i know this sounds fairly cliche but i just thought i'd share a quick context of who and why i am um coming back to where we are i think this the initiative that we on diversity has done with these inspiring seminars is really commendable um it is a world that 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 has fear that has panic that there's uncertainty about uh, all the rules that we've operated with so far suddenly seem to have changed uh, sands have shifted uh, we you know that the norms are changing and we don't even know what 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 the new norms are as and when they emerge um so so here's just something on the pathology of fear of panic of uncertainty and how do you transcend that to not just uh, become a great a uh, great person externally or manage external circumstances but also to be your own brightest most resonant self um so there will be two parts to this conversation the first part will be the why the what and how of fear of panic about why it happens about uh, the about what happens around it and how it plays out and then perhaps we will discuss some very simple practicable um practices hacks if you may on dealing with this a lot of what i say might be will be ancient wisdom derived uh, but i will try and integrate it with as many modern uh, in the language we all understand of uh, of management and and life um, so let's start with the why 
uh, the first principle of, of fear and panic is about why it happens. Um, in the Bhagavad Gita, there is the concept of the Kshetra territory, Kshetra and Kshetra Gana, that which is mine, that which is me and which is mine. So Kshetra and my territory. Um, in, in most of our Western science, we call it the circle of control, control and the circle of concern. Any kind of fear, panic, anger, helplessness emerges when we operate from the circle of concern versus the circle of control. When there's a sense of being out of control, right? So, for instance, in the corona times, the fact that there is corona is, is concern. It's, it's beyond my control. The fact that my boss didn't give me a proportion out of my control. It, it, it's, it's in my concern. It bothers me, but it's beyond my control. Uh, my husband's not happy with me. Uh, well, my, my children are not doing what they think they should be doing. Uh, my employees are not responding to me the, the way I want them to. My clients are angry with me. Whatever. All of these are things that you can directly do nothing about. Things that come from your space of concern and are beyond your control. So the origin of fear, panic, uncertainty, anger is always the sense of helplessness and the sense of being out of control. Um, now, the reason that this happens is because the fact is that as, as human beings, the only thing that you can visibly control is your thoughts, your actions, and your behaviors. But instead of focusing on those, it's always much easier to either focus on somebody else's behaviors or their actions or assign blame to them. It's much easier to say, for instance, ki mere boss ne mujhe promotion nahi diya. Ya yahan pe discrimination hai. Ya uh, uh, mere ghar pe mujhe hi samhalna padta hai. Nobody steps in. It's much easier to play the victim than to actually step into that situation and take charge or take responsibility for it yourself. Right? Um, I'll give you a very chota sa example from my personal life. That was my moment of epiphany. Um, so there was this one time, so husband, two daughters, he, he has his career and I've been trailing spouse for a while. And I remember there was this one time where I was standing there and, you know, ranting out to him, Ki main mera career and I've always been a trailing spouse and I chase you and manage the kids and the family and my career is activized. You know, he said, stop. I said, Sorry. He said, no, Eka, you're living with the outcome of your choices. I said, sorry, where did that come from? And uh, he said, look, you're choosing to look after the family and the children. I said, what do you mean? I said, will you do it? I said, the fact is somebody needs to do it, right? There are kids, there's family. Somebody needs to do it, right? Every time I stay back, you move. I stay back. I follow up with the kids, etc." He said, Ika, you're assuming you're the better parent. I said, sorry? He said, no. The fact is that if you loved and made your choices, then you would live with their consequences. So I said, no, look, I don't get where this is going. I said, so what are you, are you, are you trying to tell me that if I moved, if I got a job, which is a better job and I move, then uh, you would look after the girls and maybe move later. And he just turned on, he said, uh, of course I would. He said, if it's a job that interests you, if there's good money to it, it gets you fulfillment and you move, then we'll stay back. I didn't have an answer. And he turned around and he said, you know, you assume you're the better parent. He said, you may be. He said, but I'm not too bad. He said, Kya hoga? Zada, zada, matlab, there'll be more junk food in the house. The house will be messier than it is, but we'll pull through. So, you know, I didn't have an answer. Then I asked him, I said, look, I, why didn't you tell me this before? And he turned around and he said, Eka, I'll manage the house, the career, the family, the friends, the children, all our lives. He said, why are you expecting me to model for you? He said, Eka, we teach the kids, right? That if you can't respect yourself, your books and toys, then nobody else will. He said, so Eka, if you can't think for yourself and live in a world of your assumptions, why are you expecting that I will mollycoddle you? You're a thinking adult for yourself. If you can't take responsibility for your choices, why should I? And you know, that was my moment of epiphany. That I had been so busy 
trying to figure out everything which was in my circle of concern and thereby making myself helpless. That, oh, my husband needs a job. Oh, he needs to move. Oh, I'm assumed, I, I am expected to look after the kids. And therefore, you also build in those resentments which come out as a result of helplessness. So the first paradigm I'm parking with you is the concept of the chitra. The, so pathology, the, the pathology of fear originates the panic, the uncertainty, helpless, anger, irritation, sarcasm, whatever you want to call it, originates from the space of operating from a circle of concern and not from the circle of control and we will discuss how you make that flip how do you make that flip from the circle of concern to the circle of control so that's that's one the second is the what so how does this panic or this uncertainty build up and play out so it starts with your feeling of being out of control and then it starts playing out in everything that you think is good, everything that you think is right, everything that you think must happen. So then we start operating once this concept of fear and panic and insecurity and anger and jealousy kicks in. It starts playing itself and feeding itself over your concepts of right and wrong and good and bad. So again, beautifully, uh, the Bhagavad Gita has a glorious shloka around it, which says, Karmanne vadika raste ma Somewhere we shift from the space of actions and consequences to rights and wrongs. Somewhere we make that shift to saying that, Yahi sahi hai. Mujhe mera corporate career hona chahiye. Yahi sahi hai. Bachcho ko raat ko brush karke sona chahiye. Yahi sahi hai. Now, sahi ya galat kya hai? What's the right and the wrong or the good or the bad? It's actually just actions and consequences. Very often we use this concept of what's right, what is supposed to happen, what's good and what's bad to prevent ourselves from taking charge. Now, imagine the conversation with a child. Um, and, and you know what? I, I struggled very hard with this, right? Till I was trying to be a good mother. For whatever my definition of a mother were, I would scream at the child because there was a sense of a good mother disciplines their child. A good mother, a good mother ensures there's good food at home. A good mother must ensure that the child brushes at night. A good mother must ensure that the child does homework. Now, while this is my own sense, the fact is that it put me in the sphere of perpetually trying to be a good mother. Whereas, actually, when I realized that, you know, instead of trying to be a good mother, if I just focused on being the person I am, life would be a lot different. Because then there are only actions and consequences. Then I can have a conversation with my child saying, Ki, bhai, dekho, aisa, if you don't brush at night, my teeth are not getting dirty. Then I don't have to scream and shout and rant and rave. Because I don't operate from a space of yehi sahi hai, yehi achha hai. This is how something must be done. Right? Then I can have a conversation even with my, with, with my child or with my employee or with whoever else it is. Of saying that, look, if you don't eat vegetables, my stomach's not getting spoiled. You don't do your homework, doesn't bother me. Including, by the way, in leadership roles in corporate organizations. Suddenly, nobody, I, I am not responsible personally for your professional actions, actions and consequences. If you are my head of marketing and if my marketing is not done, then I will take it on with you. Not personally, look at because you are supposed to have given your life for the organization. I don't have to do that. Then it's just actions and consequences. Then that conversation becomes a very objective conversation of saying that, look, dude, you were supposed to do one, two, three, four, five things. Those things haven't happened. Now, how do you want to, what do you want to do about it? How do you want to deal with it? Then it's not a, it's, it's not a conversation which is about a right has been violated or a, you know, a wrong sin has been committed. That construct goes off. And I love it. I, I love the Bhagavad Gita, which actually that explains to me that there are no rights and wrongs. There are only actions and their consequences.
right so i've actually had somebody ask me once uh, in one of the classrooms that i was uh, talking about this concept and they said what do you mean if, if if there are no goods and bads what if somebody comes and kills 50 people what if i want to kill 50 people and i go kill 50 people so isn't that good or bad I said, no, again, it's actions and consequences. You kill 50 people, you will get arrested, you will get tried for murder, and you will die. So there are no rights and wrongs. In fact, this afternoon, we were having this conversation with, with, with my um, daughter who was very upset about somebody. There, there's a whole society of people called flat earthers, people who still believe that the earth is flat, right? And she was, and she's, of course, one of those very scientifically oriented, young, aggressive, ambitious, hormonal teenagers. And I was trying to tell her, I said, but it's their belief. She said, no, how can there be a belief over science? Right? Now, here's again something that I would warn uh, her of. The concept is science is right. Again, it's the same assumption that's playing out in a different aspect. There's no difference between uh, holding on to the notion of science is right or the notion of corporate careers are right or the notion of rat ko brush karna is right. There are no rights and no wrongs. And again, when we come to the second part of this conversation, we will figure out how to deal with this. This concept of being stuck in the space of right and wrong and good and bad and how the world should be, must be, is supposed to be, is again feeds into the pathology and generates fear, panic, anger, and therefore builds back up into the sense of being out of control and helplessness. So we've covered the why of, um, of, of of fear, panic, anger, irritation. We've covered the what. So how does it play out, right? Um, the third bit is actually the most interesting bit. The third bit is how does it play out and how can we gain back control, right? Um, there's a very interesting shloka again that we've all grown up with um, in, in most Indian households. This is from the Upanishad. It's from the Brahma Ranyaka Upanishad. And it's a shloka that says, Asatoma Satkamaya, Tamasoma Jyotir Kamaya. Right? Uh, it's a shloka that says that you don't take away darkness, you introduce light. You don't take away untruths, you introduce truth. Uh, the Western science has a very interesting term for it. It's called neuroplasticity. Uh, now, the origin of neuroplasticity is very interesting. The fact is that the brain operates in binaries. The brain either, it's, it's a zero or a one. So either it knows something or it doesn't know. So there's either absence or presence. There's no concept of a negative. So zero hai or one hai. There's no negative. So you can't undo something. You can't not do something. You can't stop something. You can't quit something. You can't lose something. The brain doesn't know how to do that. Right. Um, the way we operate or the way the mind of the brain operates is in this concept of neural pathways. Neural pathways are, um, they're like these, they're actually like these roads that get triggered off the moment you feel a certain emotion or the moment you have a thought. Right. Um, so supposing you get angry. Now the moment you get angry, your anger ka neural pathway has got triggered. And limbic system kick, kicking in, it builds up to the action of then, you know, your, your uh, blood pressure increasing, your blood running to your, uh, to your extremities, pupils getting dilated, blood pressure going up. Essentially, the whole anger pathology kicks in and prepares you for a fight, right? Now, when you, when you have to deal with this, when you have to deal with anger, you can't say, I'm not angry. I'm not angry. I'm not angry because that brain is binary. It doesn't understand not angry. It's actually focused only on that anger. So, or let's take any other example, right? Uh, let's say you're trying to quit smoking or you're trying to lose weight. Till you're trying to lose weight, there is only weight on your brain. Till you're trying to quit smoking, there's only that cigarette on your brain that you are hating with absolute vengeance. Right. Um, till you're trying to, what else shall I take an example of? Actually, anger is the best one on this because it's it's the most obvious. So, okay. If anybody who's ever tried to quit quit non-veg, now think about it. If you're a vegetarian by birth, tumhare mind mein non-veg ka thought ya concept bhi nahi aata, right? Similarly, 
but when you're a non-vegetarian trying to quit it you're only focused on your non-veg and till you're focused on that non-veg the cigarette the anger the weight it is all there and yours to stay till you're focusing on the fear the panic the insecurity the sadness it's all there to stay so neuroplasticity talks about or asatoma sadkamaya talks about the fact that you don't undo something you just create an alternate pathway so for instance when we are dealing with anger and anger management uh, you remember chakde india in chakde india there was this girl had peed right the girl from chandigarh would get really angry and her mother used to say beta tu gussa thukde tu pani pee le pani pee le right that's because the moment our brain ek hi cheez kar sakta hai ek time pe by the way multitasking is a is an absolute myth and that's the topic of a different of a, of a separate seminar but the brain can only do one thing at a time so if your if your anger pathway has kicked in and you snap it you snap it with a sip of water you snap it with counting from 1 to 10 you snap it with breathing calmly anything that you snap it with an alternate neural pathway kicks in so you don't quit smoking you start drinking water for instance you don't lose weight you start eating healthy or exercising you don't not lie i am not going to lie you don't not lie you simply start telling the truth right so the way you break out of a fear mindset is of saying i'm not afraid i'm not afraid or you're very afraid so when you have to skip out of that when you have to switch that then you operate not from the fear mindset but from the mindset of what can i do what can i build up on what's the next uh what's the next innovation that we can do what's the next product development that we can do what's the next client we can meet who's the next person i can call any time that you operate from the negative mind space you own it and i'm going to give you another very chota sa example right um so there's this couple that stays in our building that my parents are fairly fond of they have a daughter who's my daughter's age and uh, my parents have been telling us forever milna chahiye tumhe wagera very good we just not found the time so there was this one day we stay on the 27th floor they stay on the 23rd floor so i was entering the elevator and this couple was in the elevator Right. So you meet people in the elevator. And by the way, this is not during the Corona COVID times at all. Right? This predates COVID. I promise, I have been nowhere near my elevator in the last one month. Uh, so I think about that. <laughs> <laughs> very good about it. I promise. Um, yes, this is before a month. So I got into the elevator, and uh, I uh, they were there in the elevator. What uh, I said. No. usually like you meet people say turn and i said are how are you i said you know my mother is so fond of you she really speaks highly of you guys and she is really really fond of you now typically how would you respond to it right you you heard a statement like that kya kahoge palat kya aapka bhi oh you know thank you so it's a small talk right so thank you so sweet of you uh, are we are also very fond of her are they very nice right? this is this is the sort of response that you would normally expect so i was like surprised because suddenly you know she turned around and she said uh, why are you jealous now it was said very softly sweetly mildly you know that cute sarcasm kind of manner uh, but and i came back home and told my mother and my mother said beta tum mujhe judge kar rahi ho i said no to me that's on the point i have no relationship with them i don't know from them from madam it doesn't matter but to me it tells me the mind space you're operating from the fact that you know somewhere wo jealousy hai na mind mein ya wo word hai ya wo emotion hai so it's not a function of uh, whether it is just said in humor or cutely or whatever but this is it tells me the mind space you're operating from this is the equivalent of holding on to non veg or holding on to cigarette or holding on to weight or holding on to anger in your mind while you're still battling it so this whole narrative that we are raised on i beat it resent it will power i am going to beat the crap out of it to doesn't work fight it and you know go ahead and whatever it doesn't work it has to be done bahut kehte hain jisko hum log sahaj kehte hain bahut hi smoothly calmly and you just find a positive alternative you don't fight the negative till you are fighting with it you're emotionally involved there it won't let you move on ahead that's the space you're operating from right so that's the 
third principle. We'll actually start backwards now. Uh, in fact, there's something that I really want you to try and, and park with. I know there are people on, on this call who've experienced me earlier and I, I really hope they're practicing this. But I have to share with you the most powerful um, exercise I've done with myself. It's the, it's the taking away of negative words, of no negative words at all. Because we also don't understand the mind of any negative word. I'm reducing my immunity, I'm reducing my blood, 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 every time that I use a negative word. So no, no, cannot, can't, shouldn't, wouldn't, mustn't, couldn't, don't do, don't stop, all of those. And suddenly if you're able to do that with yourself, you find the space of alternatives. You find the space of conversation. It's a really, really powerful activity. And the best part of it is because it's a game you're playing with yourself, the other person doesn't even know. And suddenly they are surprised. Imagine your child walks up to you, Mama, can I have ice cream? Right? Your first response is no. But if you can't say a no, then you engage in alternative searching. Are you really hungry? Is your cough okay? Would you like to play a game instead? Mama, I want to watch TV. Right? Do you want us to create a game together? You can't say a no. Imagine your employee walks up to you, can I take leave? Do we have budgets for this? Can I get a budget approval on this? You know you don't have those budgets. But you can't say a no. That's when you engage in hunting for the alternative, creating that alternative of saying, um, okay, look, our budgets here are limited. Let's look at what we can do. Are there things that we can do that possibly give us more business? You know, the whole conversation shifts. And by the way, this works fabulously with in-laws, with family, with friends, and especially in conflicted relationships. So this is the easiest way. And what happens is that dhire, 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 what begins with words, try this in emails. Emails are actually the easiest place to try this at because anyways, you know, you don't just shoot off an email, you're writing it. There's a gross motor connection between the mind and the fingers. And when you're typing, make sure no negative word is, is typed out at all, right? So um, try this. What happens is that it starts at the behavior level. But what it does is that it allows that pause or the snap of that negative cycle from kicking. It's the equivalent of the, of the drinking of water during anger or breathing or counting, whatever it is, it allows for that snap to happen. The moment there is a negative word that comes up in your mind, you are operating or are going to trigger off some kind of fear, anger, snark, sarcasm, hurt, offense, insecurity, something or the other. So the moment it triggers off, break it with the use of a positive word. This is by far the most, uh, the most insightful, powerful thing that I have done for me in my life. And slowly I found that dhire dhire, it starts with behaviors, it starts with communication, it starts at a superficial level. But the neural pathway gets created, strengthened, created, strengthened till it becomes muscle memory. See, it's equivalent to the muscle you work out at your gym. Right? If you want to build your biceps, Remember your, your trainer is always telling you work the bicep, work the bicep, focus on the bicep. It's exactly that. If you're trying to acquire a lean look, let's say you don't want to build your uh, abdominal muscle for whatever reason. Right? You don't kill that muscle. No, you don't, don't go there, sit there attacking that muscle. Just ignore it. Ignore the muscle. Just, just keep it out of your mind and it atrophies. Focus on what you need to build, not what you need to destroy or not what needs to be left alone. Because your mind does not understand the negative. And that's the secret of neuroplasticity. Um, so what we've done is we've covered the why, which is why does fear happen? Fear happens, fear, panic, uncertainty, insecurity. Uh, all of that happens. Eka, because, huh? Yeah, so while you were talking about, you know, this hate thing, uh, there is a question here and I thought it's relevant. That's why I'm, you know, sort of... Hmm? Mm -hmm. uh, asking uh, you this question. Mm -hmm. So Sanjukta Chaudhary has asked, could you give an example of how to not use hate? What are the other alternatives for the hate word? Okay, let's take an example of um, of the word hate, right? Uh, 
um, I hate it when the dishes are not done. I hate it when I wake up to a dirty kitchen. Fair? Is, is this the kind of uh, example you're looking for, Sanjukta? I mean, just, just type uh, in the yes. Okay, yes. Oh, good, good. You're there. I can talk to you then. So, I hate it when I wake up to a dirty kitchen. Okay. Now, if you have to create the alternative to that, what's the alternative you would create? So, obviously, this is a conversation that's happening either with you. Somebody is responsible for the kitchen, whoever it is, right? So, instead of hating the dirty kitchen, can we work at figuring out how the kitchen is kept clean? So what that then triggers in is that at night, let me just keep the dishes aside. Let me put in things away into the fridge. Let's just put it out there. Similarly, if this is a conversation happening with a third party, it may be happening with your children. It may be happening with other family members. Instead of waking up to, you know, I hate it when you guys dirty the kitchen. That conversation can be, you know, I'd be really happy and it would really help me if when you do this, just keep the dish in its place. Right? Okay. Sorry, yeah, this is my, I'm just collecting my chai. Ladies, this is Manisha Devi who helps us run our house and is my rock star. Hi. Hi. This is chai time. Uh, yeah. Rashmi, we have one more question. Should we take it now or later? Yeah, no, that's what I was just uh, trying to uh, say that. So, you know, so you gave a good example of, uh, you know, uh, trying to say that, you know, uh, if if there is something you want the kitchen clean, then, you know, um, you know, you just plan it out and, you know, sort of, you know, and also have positive conversations with people around you, say that this will make me happy, etc. Uh, but even if they don't end up doing, uh, it is still bothering you, right? And end of the day, you are actually killing yourself because you will go ahead and still clean the kitchen and go to sleep and you will keep tiring yourself. So how do you get out of it? A similar question is, uh, so, and there's another question which has come from Pooja, where she is saying, despite my best efforts, including meditation, I find it difficult to accept my teenage daughter's lackadaisical attitude. What if I do to change myself? So it's a similar question because, you know, you're getting frustrated with people around you. So what so, do this, again, that second one, both these questions actually go back to the why of fear, which is circle of control and circle of concern. Right? So I had this very interesting conversation with, uh, and, and I'll tell you how it plays back at you. It plays back at you because uh, you, uh, you are then emotionally blackmailed out of it, right? Either emotionally blackmailed or personally blackmailed. So I had, like, like when I was growing up and, and those 20 years of uh, being very angry and resentful were about the fact that we were raised to be very approval seeking. So my uh, our parents, and very rightfully so, would always tell us that someone else should not look bad, see what they will say, see what they will say, see how they will say, see how they will say, etc. And I realized that every time I got angry, every time, my anger was always about something that I expected somebody else to do. Dekho, maine unke le kiya, unhone mere le nahi kiya. Dekho, so and so doesn't respect me or doesn't love me. Dekho, you know, and and all those were reasons that I would get. Angry. Suffering Sita syndrome, which Apurva says. Yeah, I love the I love the word the suffering Sita syndrome. Bah, the classic victim mindset. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, my epiphany happened when I realized that the reason these things were bothering me were because they were a part of my nurture. They are things that I possess. They are my shadows. These are things I possess, but I don't own them. Which means that I've been made to believe. And, and this is where it comes to that second one of saying, kya sahi hai, kya galat hai. If a dirty kitchen bothers you, it bothers you because somewhere you are operating from the mindset that a kitchen must be clean. So go back to that second one of the concept of right and wrong and supposed to happen and not supposed to happen. So my moment of epiphany happened when I realized that oh, every time I got angry, it would be because somebody didn't live up to whatever expectations I had out of them or I wasn't generating enough love or respect or whatever it is. The moment I realized that and went back to examine it, I realized that that's a part of nurture. It bothers me because it's not naturally me. It's a shadow. Now, that epiphany allowed me to then step into myself and said, you know what, naturally to me, 
आई एक्चुअली डोंट केयर वॉट पीपल थिंक इसलिए मुझे गुस्सा आता है जब मुझे अगला आदमी रिस्पेक्ट नहीं देता बिकॉज ही सपोज टू गिव मी रिस्पेक्ट बट एक्चुअली डीप इन साइड ऑफ मी आई डोंट केयर वॉट पीपल थिंक ना द मोमेंट आई एम्ब्रेस दैट एंड इट्स अ वेरी स्केरी स्पेस इट्स अ स्केरी स्पेस बिकॉज ऑल योर लाइफ यू ग्रोन अप एंड हेल्ड ऑन टू दिस नोशन ऑफ वॉट्स राइट so what's right is that people should respect you people should love you you must always be held in high esteem when you do something for somebody somebody must do something back to you but actually if that's not my truth the scary space is then what's my truth if i lose this then will i become barbaric and rude and you know completely non people pleasing i will become this absolute bohemian but surprise surprise the moment i am able to let go of this anger and the shadow of being approval seeking it allows me to truly love you it then allows me to step into my space be my best self where rashmi i love you for my sake then i don't need you to love me back then i don't need you to do anything for me then and 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 you know that allows me to operate from the space of supreme power where people around me tell me are but you love me something something i said yeah that i love you is my problem that you have to earn its expression is yours suddenly it actually takes you to that space of liberation of saying ki tum sabji nahi khaoge na tumhara pet dard hoga so my husband turns around and says kyun mera pet dard hoga tumhe takleef nahi hogi i go of course hogi bahut bahut deep takleef hogi but It, uh, my job is not to convince you my job is to inform you i can't fight the battle with you for your stomach getting spoiled because you don't eat the vegetables i will again that concept of right and wrong versus actions and consequences you are a thinking adult there's only so much that i can do so i shift from my space of control and concern so my concern is ki tumhari tabiyat kharab hogi tum theek nahi kar rahe ho you know somebody wrote to me about teenager and like a difficult attitude i have two teenage daughters ah oh, tell me about it but to move from that distance of saying that look i can only tell you i can only inform you my job is not to convince you you're a thinking adult for yourself or you're going to become a thinking adult for yourself i can only make you aware of actions and consequences like there somebody there was a ceo there's a ceo that 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 i was coaching and he spoke about the fact ki mujhe na bahut gussa aata hai when my son walks in with dirty football boots and dirty is a carpet right and i said okay so i see again you're operating from a space of concern son walks in dirty is the carpet you get angry control mein hai tumhare nahi so he said nahi main to bahut dantta hu usse i got your anger shows your helplessness and your state of out of control he said so what's an alternative i said you tell me right so again the those three things that we said the first space that started operating is the space of helplessness that look you you know how dare you come in dirty my carpet from there it moved to the state of how it played out ye galat baat hai tumse kaha tha nahi karne ko tum sun nahi rahe ho ye galat baat hai sahi galat and then when we moved to saying what's an alternate path and it took him a long time till we arrived at a solution i said but koi as a carpet to clean karana hai tumne wo to jo ho gaya ho gaya usme there's nothing you can do But your reaction, if you were generating the alternate pathway, is to actually negotiate with the child, or to actually turn around and say, "Dude, every time you come in and uh, dirty the carpet, you will forfeit some privilege, be grounded, not be allowed football, whatever it is. I mean, that that's for you to figure how it works. But suddenly, that conversation is shifted from the how of it. So the sense of saying that. uh you know instead of uh, how something must not happen and for, from allowing anger to kick in to the alternate neural pathway of negotiation butter action consequences the concept of right and wrong has been challenged to the concept of actions and consequences so that son is also now saying ki yaar isme na sahi galat ki baat hi nahi hai the fact is if i step on the carpet the consequence of that is that i get grounded for whatever so it's no longer a a dharma sankat it's not a battle of wills any longer but a simple action consequences conversation and therefore at the parental level you brought it from a circle of concern i don't know what to do about my son and he comes and dirties my carpet to the circle of control that look i have to get it cleaned that's fine but now i get to forfeit these privileges for that child or whatever it is right so these shifts happen only when you start from that space of creating alternate neural pathways so that's the first part of the conversation i'll quickly finish in what's the time like 
Okay, very good. Uh, in the next five, six minutes, I will quickly finish the second part of the conversation. So this is about the why, the what, and the how, the circle of concern and control, the concept of kshetra, um, to the concept of rights and wrongs and supposed to, must, could, etc. The concept of right, wrong, good, bad, versus the concept of actions and consequences, karman ne vadikaraste, to how it plays out, which is how do you create those alternate neural pathways with positive affirmations, asatoma sadgamaya, tamasoma jyotirgamaya. So the why, what, and the how. Um, what I now want to share with you is three hacks that address each of these things. So the first and the most powerful one, which I don't even count as a hack, it's, it's, it's a basic life skill and practice, is the one of creating alternate positive neural pathways and affirmations. Uh, the one thing that I really, so how do you tackle that space of circle of control and circle of concern? Where are you operating from? We spoke of shadows. Shadows are that which is within you, but don't belong to you. How do they get manifested. They get manifested in anger, snark, sarcasm, irritation, depression, hurt, offense, any of these. So watch yourself every time that you get angry, snark, sarcastic, irritated, hurt, depressed, offended. Anytime that any of this happens, you're operating from your space or circle of concern, not circle or control of concern. Uh, Pooja, I know, I'm sorry, I just saw that our shadows are sanskars, very similarly. Sanskars are impressions you approve, but sanskars um, are just karmic impressions. They don't have a judgment with them. They're not right or wrong or good or bad. They are actions and consequences. So that's the second one we're coming to. So the first space is every time that you're operating from this anger and irritation, sarcasm, you're operating from concern, not control. They are just behavioral manifestations of you feeling out of control of your helplessness. Watch for it, examine it, study it, find out why it is. Link to that is the second one. Watch yourself every time you come up against words like supposed, should, must, SI hota hai, SI hona chahiye, ye sahi hai, ye galat hai, I am right, you're wrong, so-and-so is wrong, so-and-so is right. Every time you use these words or these thoughts occur to you, they are coming from that second space of playing the victim. They are coming from that space of, uh, of living in a world that's not yours. This is that second wala, karmanne vadikareste wala space. So question it, examine it, go back deep into it. There is no concept of right or wrong. And if you're operating from that, the so kitchen must be spotlessly clean. Where is it coming from? What's it feeding back into you, right? And then build it back to the circle of control and concern. And the third and the biggest thing that, that you can do for yourself is the one that I was talking about. Ki, yaar, once I get rid of these, uh, the reason that we hold on to them and they center us completely is because of the fear case beyond care. Like for me, if I don't think from, from a 10 years ago perspective, if I don't think of what people say, or if I don't live for love, respect, um, adulation, and you know, a peaceful, non-conflict atmosphere, to phir mera hai kya? Main kaun? Right? So the third one is find your own passion. Frankly, these COVID times are glorious times to find that passion because you know, all of us crib and complain that I don't time, nahi hai. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't have the luxury to pursue my passion. This has actually been that time where most of us have gotten our salaries, at least to the best of the organizational capabilities. We have time, we've beaten commute. Really, what are you doing about yourself? The question I'd ask you is that, supposing I take you away for two years, and I tell you, roti kapda makan sorted hai, tumhare financial liabilities, bachche theek rahenge, ghar, paani, kapda, sab milega. Tum apne liye kya kar? Because you can get rid of you can't get rid of darkness. Where's the light? What's the passion that you want to put yourself into it? So the why, the what, the how of your panic, anger, uncertainty, whatever you want to call it. Simple hacks to deal with each of these three. And the last one, the last really big one is that daily thought of who are you? You know, when we are children, we are defined by our identities are defined by what we do. If you brush your teeth at night, you'll be a good boy. If you finish your homework, you'll be a good boy. If you go down to play, you'll be a good boy. And then somewhere when we're around 12 and 13, our identities become a function of what we have. 
से आस्क यू रश्मि तुम कौन हो या आप आप मतलब कौन है आप राइट योर आइडेंटिटी वुड बी अ फंक्शन ऑफ मैं या तो या तो योर जेंडर और द रोल्स एंड रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज एंड द सीईओ फ्यूचर शॉप स्किल्स आई और आई एम अ ग्रेजुएट ऑफ ऑक्सफोर्ड इट्स अ फंक्शन ऑफ आइदर व्हाट यू डू और व्हाट यू हैव वेदर इट्स जॉब्स स्पाउस क्लब मेंबरशिप्स मटेरियल पोजीशंस एजुकेशन क्वालिफिकेशंस व्हाट एवर इट इज सो द बिग क्वेश्चन दैट हेल्प्स यू रीच योरसेल्फ इज हु आर If I had to strip you of what you do and what you have, you can. Are you a function of what you do and have, or is there an identity behind you? So with that, I'll leave. Uh, I'll park myself and and take questions. Do we still have time for questions, Rashmi? Yes, yes, you do have, and there are a couple of questions. Uh, so I have a request, uh, please. When people switch on their videos, I really like looking at people. Not the audio. <laughs> We'll get a lot of uh, noise. Achha. Noise, and we've also connected it to FB Live. I would suggest that you know, uh, you put it, put on your video on, but uh, keep yourself on mute if you don't have a question. Hmm. Yes, I'm listening. Rashmi, you had some questions for me. Yeah, so there is this question from Basudhara. It says the difference between a, an expectation and a hope. I, I think it's just a statement that she has made. So, any questions that people have? But I hope we've addressed your question on shadows and sunscars. And really, that's the difference between. Uh, and that's why I actually love the Bhagavad Gita and I love my ancient wisdom texts because उसमें कोई सही गलत होता ही नहीं है. Sanskar is a karmic transaction. It's just an action and a consequence that you incur. And meditation, because somebody asked me about this earlier, also meditation actually helps you shed your sanskar. So the whole idea of yoga is yoga chitta vritti, which means that आपके जितने memories और ये sanskaric impressions होते हैं, it helps you shed them. Pooja Dhananya says, despite my best efforts, including meditation, I find it difficult to accept my teenage daughter's lackadaisical attitude. What can I do to change myself and be more accepting? Ah, this is a tough one. So, uh, if we have five minutes, I'll explain this. Right um, from the from the age that you are about nine or ten, you're just a reflection of your parents. You just reflect what your parents give you. You're completely outward in, right? जो बाहर से मिला उसको reflect कर दिया. It's around this age of ten, eleven, twelve that your identity starts emerging. The ego starts emerging. You start finding out who this creature that you are. So you know your what you like, dislike, your passions, your music. Who do you love? Why do you love? Um, you know your hormonal identities. Everything starts emerging. And while you're still dealing with this new creature that's coming out of you. The fact is that your external influences haven't gone away. So your parents are still at it, right? We are still at it. Ki padh lo, beta, financial security. Ye mat pursue karna. Beta, achhi tarah padhai karo. Beta, kapde ke kaise pehne hain. Beta, dekho. Ah, uh, log kya kahenge? All of that starts coming in. This enmeshing continues till you're twenty-five, not till you're nineteen. So teenage actually ends not in nineteen, but at twenty-five, which is why our jo brahmacharya hota tha, wo pachistan ki umar tak hota tha. Um. and then whatever this this then becomes your shadows your ego your subconscious for the rest of your life right um the teenager struggling any which is and by the way i also have this struggle i have a serious problem with it i am just hoping that at this point of time i have given her enough um enough sense of values and action and consequences for her to come back to it when she comes back to it. their lackadaisical attitude is not to spite you and i find it very hard to accept as well because din bhar hamare ghar mein jhagde hote hain but the understanding that it is not to spite you that she is doing this but because she is struggling with her own identity acceptance peer pressure career what am i going to do etc etc so just give them that leeway and by the way hormonally physiologically and physically their sleep cycle is different from yours they will stay up nights they will be curious they will explore all that you can do is park with them ki beta actions and consequences and, and i i hope that helps puja so uh, ek up you did talk about actions and consequences and i think it's a good idea you know sort of uh, you know show an alternative uh, reality to people instead of reacting on that particular thing at that point of time hmm. 
so uh, but what what happens if you know once you're showing the consequences then there is a debate which is happening uh, and that happens with my son who's also a teenager because you are actually showing alternate reality and there's a debate saying that oh this is this possibly cannot happen or whatever so you spar with that person or how do you take it forward the second principle the need to prove that i'm right the idea of right and wrong and the need to prove that i'm right so i am it 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 is it exists with you and it exists with him so then you take a back seat and say you okay fine that's how it is your choice you will live with the consequences we by the way have a very interesting rule in the house right we were debating about tattoos right and uh, i am very clear that anything so ye 25 saal wala concept whether they agree or not they have accepted ki acha isme kuch sach hoga so the rule is that every permanent decision everything that's undoable must be done after your 25 so is a tattoo undoable no it's not so you can't get one till your 25 is a wild drunk night about town undoable completely is undoable so that you can have just now right whether you do or not is your choice but a tattoo is you can't undo it dyeing your hair a random color undoable of course hair will, hair will grow back so anything that's permanent gets done after your 25 anything that's not permanent gets that has no permanent consequences needs to get done now so a pregnancy or oh, completely permanent and not undoable so you wait till 25 so and and they they were really laughing at me saying that how can you put a tattoo and a pregnancy on the same scale i said because first principle is same it first principles are long term effect hai ya nahi hai and i think those are some little agreements that 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 are possible and you'll have to find what what what's your logic in the house of them i find this permanency permanency logic working so far touch wood <laughs> so you know it was it was great in fact we were almost at the fag end of our session so we talked about the circle of concern you talked about why what and how you talked about actions and consequences and also uh, the fact that you know there are various behavioral manifestations that we need to be watching out for ourselves being more self aware um, not play the victim card see if we are playing the victim card and also uh, also try and understand who am i you know the final you know going from beyond so i i, I think um, it is it, it it was a very nice uh, you know a chart of you know getting ourselves from outside to inside before you leave my final uh, uh, question would be around mentoring so what do you think do you think you know we you know we have got 40 50 people out here do you think we should be reaching out to others in this covid times and you know sort of uh, uh, you know how do you think is is there that is that also a good mechanism to you know sort of fight the stress which is happening within us I think it helps to have communities. I think it helps to have safe spaces, communities. I think it always helps to have mentors who, um, you know, and and I I do believe that you will always have different kind of mentors for different needs, right? I have this old retired IAS officer who I reach out to when I need any information, intellectual input, right? And I know that मुझे वो आंसर मिलेगा, right? Um, I will usually reach out to my mother if I have any parenting issues. I have some professional mentor that I reach out to when I have professional challenges. So, but I, I am actually a great believer of these safe spaces. I am a great believer of communities, safe spaces, people who, uh, who will allow me to think with them. I'm, I'm not looking for a solution. but i just need somebody who can bounce it back for me bounce and some of your ideas yeah safe right. space yeah and 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 poke them for me matlab without or uh, without their own personal vested interest in it yeah just help me think absolutely so you know we believe in this and that's why beyond diversity you know we realize that you know there are a lot of people of course we reach out to our own mentors families friends parents etc but sometimes as you said professionally we also would want to you know sort of you know sort of there is a lot of stress right now am i losing my job am i there is my paycheck coming next year is the organization there so there is a lot of concern with all of us right now so uh, you know in beyond diversity we actually have come up with a mentor mentee uh, pro bono program uh, we have already launched it please do do go to our um, you know social media handles and our, our website to understand more you can sign up as a mentor or sign up as a mentee and sort of you know give it to each other you know you know you, you, you know you know you can share your concerns you can actually also uh, help others as well 
So, um, sorry, sorry to pause this. And because this is such an uncertain time, otherwise, exactly. It's therefore, even more important to find who you are and what your passions are. Tum apne liye kya kar rahe ho? Because tum what will you replace this fear, this anxiety, this uncertainty with? For the lack of anything else that you will have inside you, you will continue holding on to these. So in fact, we did launch passion projects across future sharp skills. This to say, what are you doing for yourself? What are you doing for yourself? Exactly. So what are you doing for yourself? And what can you do for others? Because there are a lot of people who would say, ki, hey, okay, I am fine. You know, can I share? Like you've come here, you've taken out your time, pro bono time, and you're speak, speaking to about 50 uh, strangers on this group. So you, you are mentoring us. So thank you so much for that. So uh, people, you will be uh, getting a link as well if you all want to join as a mentor or mentee. And we do look forward to you joining us on our next Inspiring Thursday session. Uh, the next session actually is on a Wednesday because we could not get the speaker's time on Thursday. So it's on 29th, so around the same time, 5 o'clock. Uh, so uh, please do look out and do join us for that session as well. Uh, we will be talking about uh, COVID uh, times restructuring and uh, headcount uh, structuring by the KPMG partner, Vishali Dongri. So, thank you so much, Eka. Uh, any any last last lines of wisdom before we close? I know Sacred Games has really destroyed this for us, but we have two Mahavakya. The okay. first is Tata Thwama Asi, that which you are, circle of concern, and Aham Brahmasi. I am the infinite divine within myself. Like I said, I know Sacred Games has really destroyed it for us, but it is a really powerful space to belong to. Switch within your own self. The world will take care. Okay, in, in, that, in that note, we shall uh, close it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, people, for joining in. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. I look forward to seeing you all again in Inspiring Thursdays next week. Thank you, Bhairavi. Anything from your thank side? Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Ika, for this wonderful, uh, you know, uh, insights into, and especially how you kind of, you know, related it with ancient wisdom. That was really, really simple and, you know, easy to follow. And uh, for our participants here, Ika was sharing with me the other day that she is also sharing the simple practices on uh, Radio Mirchi here in uh, Delhi. So, uh, you know, our participants from Delhi can log on there as well. Thank you so much, Ika. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me over.